Toilet paper. Known for its weird math and occasional disappearances from the shelves at your local Walmart. It's something we all take for granted until it becomes worryingly absent. But the fear of having nothing to wipe with is a recent one, as toilet paper as we know of it today was only invented around 150 years ago. This begs the question, what did we use prior to the invention of toilet paper? Clearly, this was something you all wanted to know about. So whether you're next to triple ply or a bidet, get comfortable on the porcelain throne as we learn something new. The origin story of toilet paper goes back thousands of years, but before its inception, people still felt the need to wipe down there. Early humans used literally whatever they could find. Moss, sand, stones, leaves, water, even seashells were all fair game. Whatever made the most sense is what was most often used. The Inuit, for example, commonly used snow. Early sailors would at times use frayed ropes. This use of whatever is abundant and nearby essentially sums up what humanity has utilized for most of its history. Makes sense. However, as civilization developed, so too did wiping preferences. As society formed, those higher in the class structure took to using closer precursors to toilet paper such as furs. But ancient China is where we really start to see things take shape. China prides itself on four great inventions of its ancient civilization that helped shape the world on a global level. These inventions are the compass, gunpowder, block printing, and paper. They invented a way to use a pulp mixture of bark and hemp to form paper around 8th century BC. But it was in the 6th century BC that a scholar would mention it in writings of the utmost importance to him that I dare not use it for toilet purposes suggesting that the Chinese used the paper for things beyond writing, though not necessarily manufacturing it for that purpose. That wouldn't come until the 1400s, when toilet paper was made specifically for the emperor, his family, and other royals. It was made to be perfumed to cover up much of the smell. But elsewhere in the world, other civilizations weren't as keen on paper. The Romans, for example, created a terrasorium. While they were sitting in some of the first public restrooms to have running water, sitting side by side others, discussing the events of the day, they would pass around the terrasorium as they finished. It was essentially a stick with a sponge on the end that was soaked in vinegar or salt water when it got too dirty. The wealthy often had their own, but the poorer population tended to have a lot of illnesses from sharing the disease-covered stick. While the stick was uniquely Roman, the Romans did share something called a pisoi with the ancient Greeks, being found at both sites. Pisoi tended to be small, round stones or pieces of ceramic that could be used, but here's the kicker. Archaeologists would often find that Greeks had written the names of their enemies on the pisoi before using them as a way to show just how much they thought of their enemies. But for hundreds of years after that, most of society tended toward water specifically pairing the use of water with the left hand. This led many to associate the left hand with uncleanliness and the right hand with greeting others or eating. In Europe, they would keep water on hand near their chamber pots, while in France, at the end of the 17th century, they were pioneering the first bidets, which one could straddle as they washed themselves, hence the name which came from the French word for pony. It was in the 15, 16, and 1700s that the European settlers likely learned from the natives how to use corn cobs to wrap up their business, at least until the creation of the Old Farmer's Almanac. The book, which first came into circulation in 1792, contained everything from forecast predictions to planting charts to recipes and more, but in 1818 they began to make it with what would become its signature whole. People could use this to hang pages in the kitchen for easy access when looking at recipes or, more suited for our discussion, hanging it in the outhouse to be used as toilet paper. Those of you who watched my episode on mail-order catalogs will know that corn and the farmer's almanac would be soon substituted for the soft paper of the Sears and Roebuck catalog. But it was also around the same period of innovation that toilet paper would start to take its modern form. Joseph Gaiety, an entrepreneur from New York City, is credited for being the first to create a product specifically designed to clean up after using the toilet. His product, sheets of hemp paper infused with aloe vera, claimed to help prevent hemorrhoids while also presenting customers with an easy and sanitary way to clean their nethers. The packs had 500 flat sheets and sold for 50 cents, about $14 in today's money, and consequently wasn't all that popular. Why pay so much when the catalogs available to the masses were free? The introduction of indoor plumbing as opposed to outhouses meant that the paper had a much greater chance of clogging the pipes. 
Cheaper toilet paper in the 1930s allowed it to gain more popularity, as well as the appearance in advertisements for a splinter-free TP. You see, the previous manufacturing techniques would often leave painful splinters in the rears of those who used them, making them even less popular. But with the price coming down and the splinters a thing of the past, toilet paper was here to stay. At least, in America. Other parts of the world had a significantly harder time convincing people of its use. The 1900s was an era of being prim and proper, and discussing bodily excrement and how to clean it was something that everyone was embarrassed to do. In Germany, a company called Hockel overcame the problem with the slogan, ask for a roll of Hockel if you don't want to say toilet paper. Over time, Europe became more and more acquainted with the use of toilet paper, but places like France, Portugal, and Italy have consistently seen the use of bidets. Today, the toilet paper industry is worth $2.4 billion a year in the US alone, with over 26 billion rolls of toilet paper sold yearly. Toilet paper is a big business, but it might not stay that way forever. Many are looking to bidets or similar water-based systems as the future of bathroom self-care. For places in parts of Asia and the Middle East, the use of what's sometimes called a bum gun is commonly used. It's essentially a hose that sits beside the toilet. Bidets themselves, which operate in a similar manner, spray water from below and are gaining popularity around the globe. Those who use a bidet still use toilet paper to dry, but it's seen a decrease of around 80% of the paper needed. Japan's advancements in bidet technology take this a step further, with more luxurious bidets incorporating a mini blow dryer for after. It's also being seen as a more green solution by climate activists. Manufacturing a single roll of toilet paper tends to take around 37 gallons of water and 1.3 kilowatt hours of electricity. This is compared to a bidet using a fraction of that, not to mention plastic packaging and the fuel used for shipping the product. This, along with bidets seeing research backing up the fact that people don't wash their hands after the restroom as often as they claim they would, and bidets preventing the passage of infectious diseases, make bidets quite the appealing alternative as the future of the bathroom. But with prices still fairly high for a bidet people would be comfortable entering the market with, it's unclear how quickly public opinion will be able to shift away from the product that so much of human history led up to. Thank you for watching Learn Something New. I want to say a big thanks to everyone that expressed an interest in the making of this episode. You all have the ability to influence this channel. I listen to the feedback you give and will try to use it to make my channel increasingly better with each video. Your likes, views, comments, and subscriptions are what allow me to know what I'm doing right and what I can do better. So thanks again, and as always, I will see you in the next one.